Of all the realms of madness that I have had the privilege of witnessing, this, I have to say, was a concept I have never seen before, and it really takes the cake. But I also know, in the back of my mind, that this is not the worst it could be. What was the worst? So a young female named Rebecca makes friends with Tommy, and they supposedly fall in love at a very young age, but she has to suddenly move off to Japan because her mom has a job. I swear to goodness, I know this is probably an artistic choice, but something that really annoys me about these indie movies is how most of the dialogue just involves silence and people staring at each other. And you'll see what I mean with this. It's freaking excruciating. So anyway, Tommy makes a deal with her that he's gonna meet her at the pier before she leaves because he has an idea and he wanted to give her something because he's in love with her, don't you know? But unfortunately, he doesn't make it there and she has to leave. 12 years later, she comes looking for him and she is the creepiest, weirdest person I have ever seen. It's like she expects people to read her mind or most of what is supposed to be a response to other people just comes out in her staring at them. It's almost reminiscent of novels when most of what happens is you hearing the inner monologue of the main characters. And if that were to be translated exactly to a movie, this is what we'd get, except we can't hear what she's thinking. We just have this uncomfortable silence of her looking creepy, like she belongs in a freaking asylum horror movie and just staring at people and to the point where it becomes so disrespectfully annoying that you just want to slap her. Who are you? And I know you might not believe me that the majority of the movie is this, but it is. I swear to God, I can vouch that probably about 65 or more percent of this movie involves people being silent and awkwardly staring at each other when people ask them a question or where there's supposed to be dialogue. You could cut this video, sorry, you could cut this movie down for like, hmm, by about 50 minutes. Yeah, I would say by about 50 minutes and you would not have lost anything. There's some scenes that just drag on forever. Oh my goodness gracious, it's mind numbing. Like I was actually watching the movie and I found myself skipping ahead like a few minutes and there are segments in this movie where literally nothing happens or nobody says anything and nothing was lost. Hi Tommy. Stop! So then both these dumbasses decide that, oh, you know what? Even though we haven't seen each other in 12 years, we're still like madly in love with each other and whatnot. And the girl that Tommy was seeing, he just acts like she isn't there. Like he just straight up ignores her, which is so freaking rude. They pick off where they left off and I guess nobody has jobs. Tommy is apparently an activist. He starts talking about biology and how he causes chaos, which only delays the inevitable, but somehow he feels like he's making a difference. And again, we have more staring and not talking and there's this tension thing going on, will they, won't they situation that never happens because when she forces herself to go along on one of his trips, she gets out to have a pee and apparently people don't look where they're going. There's a long stretch of road with no one on it. And when Tommy decides to get out, I just, I, I don't know. Watching movies like this just pisses me off sometimes because I'm like, it's so contrived to the point where I'm wondering if this woman is actually experiencing this. Because when you think about how the movie actually continues, it seems as though none of this is real. And I'm almost convinced that it's not. This movie is so scatterbrained, it went from being called clone or womb to clone or clone to womb. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, you find out what the whole surprise is, what the idea was that Tommy wanted for Rebecca, whatever her name is, before she left. Found out that he had overslept, which is the reason he had met her by the pier, and he left the snail that they had found together. Really doesn't mean anything. Supposedly, they were so in love with each other, I guess. She apparently has his laptop now, which is like really questionable. She also calls his mother and his father over to talk to them. And out of nowhere, that's why I said it feels very contrived because out of nowhere, she decides all of a sudden this universe allows you to clone human beings. Like now there's these people that exist called copies. And get this, she misses Tommy so much that she wants to bring him back to life clone him. The mother's not okay with it, but the father's okay with it. Guess how she's gonna do it? Because this movie is just so joyful with all of these themes. She's going to uh, 
have his whoever he is all that makes him him and put the embryo inside of her her womb and she is going to carry tommy and raise him as her son yep and um <laughs> and then uh as he grows he looks exactly as he did when he was a kid and as he grows before he's even a freaking adult she starts doing things you know you know what i mean like what is even this movie what is even this freaking movie i don't even understand <clears throat> It's gonna get really weird. Now I can do whatever I want with you. Go ahead. This is the worst! Like, you know, there's, there's the themes. You know, in anime, it's fine, I, I guess. It, it is what it is. It's its own little weird thing, the brother and sister stuff, whatever. But there's something especially icky about someone who gives birth to someone so that they can grow up so you can fuck it. Like, it's just so, there's not even a word I can come up with that makes sense. And it's how so freaking weird she is, bro. Like, she's so weird. Like, I'm weird, but this is a next level weird. You know, if you have the weirdest person saying this other person is weird, beware. It's something out of this freaking world. The, the whole movie is her acting as though she's a freaking robot. And when people are speaking to her, she's this, ugh, this dumb fucking look on her face that makes you want to shoot her it's so annoying i don't know what it is with this actress if they told her to be that way with the character but she just looks down on everyone with her god awful long ass snake neck and just smiles at them like she knows a secret they don't know It's such a freaking face pounding face. You know, some people just have punchable faces. She has a face that you want to smush with a machine. I don't know what it is that gets me so angry. And it's the pauses. At least if she talked like a normal human being, I could be like, all right, fine, whatever. She just has one of those faces. She could be a badass. But no, she's this silent, dumbass person who seems as though they've lived in a freaking cottage cheese cabin their entire life away from civilization. Where were you? You were in Japan. Okay, did you not? Like, hmm. Anyway, I, I don't know. This movie just pissed me the hell off. So then there's other thing that happens, right? I know she wasn't that young when she came back. Let's say it was 12 years ago. 12 years that they haven't seen each other before she came back and reunited with Tommy. Tommy and her are around the same age. Let's say they're 21. She raises this kid and for some reason she doesn't really age. So when he's what, 10 years younger than she is? I I'm bad at math. But when he gets to the age he was, when he died, she's much older, is she not? You know, fucking gross. Like, and then he has a girlfriend that comes over and this poor girl, I don't know what is with the Game of Thrones themes here. We got freaking Matt Smith and then we got Sam Tarly's girlfriend. But that's the girlfriend, Monica. She's trying to please the mother because it's normal. You want to get to know the guy who you like's mom. And the mother is jealous. And while the girlfriend is there, she just weird ass shit like climb into bed with him while his girlfriend is working out on the beach that she moved him to because there's this whole thing about copies. And this rumor went around with the girl that he dumped to be with her. And she works at the, the whole thing is just freaking weird, man. This movie was a freaking trip. I don't really know what I was expecting, but I went into it and I was like, why did they make the main character? Did they make her creepy on purpose so we cannot root for her or something? Maybe that's what it is the concept i'm open to because i like concepts that are odd that make you think and make you go wow i mean pain can really make people do some strange things turns out she was a virgin and that was her first love and she remained that way thinking that she would get back with tommy don't know why before that point she decided not to come back to britain or wherever they are but that's the case. While the girlfriend of Tommy is there, it's clear that Tommy also has some pent up feelings ugh, <clears throat> for his mother as well. <clears throat> Sorry. And she does this freaking scene where he's playing with her and right in front of the girlfriend, she loses her composure and starts like panting and moaning in a very inappropriate way 
while he's under her shirt doing God knows what in front of this girl. Don't. What the fuck? Sega. Well, some extra drama happens, if you can even call it that, and Tommy's original mother, the person whose DNA he actually kind of belongs to, shows up but just stares at him and says nothing. He gets mad because he wants answers, and he knows he knows that woman, but he doesn't know how, because sci-fi, am I right? Then he throws a freaking fit at the table. Surprise, he actually was able to keep the beat so well during this whole thing, and I don't know how the both of them didn't bust out laughing. We're gonna skip past this hot fantasy that this person apparently has, because what ends up happening is the girl leaves, all the tension that Tommy has been building for his madre spills over when he gets angry with her after she shows him the laptop and reveals to him that he is a clone of her lover. He is confused, understandably, and then he screws his mom, because why not? She won't even tell him who she is until after he screwed her. I completely understand why after that he leaves. Can't really blame him completely, because it's not like she didn't groom him. And even though he came out of her womb, apparently, I don't know, dude, I, I can't even. I'm at, a, I'm at a loss as to what to say. She becomes pregnant with his child and she feels complete with the world because it's all she ever wanted. I, I, there's so many, I don't even know. I, I can't, I feel like I'm sucking at this because I really am at a loss for words. She must have already justified in her mind what she was doing and that this baby she was gonna be giving birth to was Tommy and not her son. But not once did she think about him and how it would affect him. It's supposed to come off as romantic, I'm guessing, but it comes off as straight up predatory and psychotic and just disturbing. Clearly the mother, or what, mother, lover, I, I don't know. She has some other issues that she's dealing with that she never got dealt with. And so here we are. She's carrying the child of her son who is a clone of her lover. I swear to God, do you understand now why I say this is all in the main character's head? <laughs> Because maybe I'm, I know the cloning, they were thinking about cloning and that's what her original boyfriend was fighting against, but they only shoehorned in that plot after Tommy died, as if someone was like, you know, it'd be a great idea. What if we could clone him? And now there's a world where other clones exist and people are prejudiced towards them. Like it's freaking X-Men. What a strange movie. Matt Smith is really going for a streak with these freaking incest things. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.